Hello everyone, welcome back. In this session, we are going to uh, have a look on refraction and what happens during the refraction and some other terms like re refractive index. We can see. So, coming to this refraction, see from childhood onwards, we learn that the light travels in a straight line. See, up to what extent the light travels in a straight line? So, the light travels in a straight line in a homogeneous medium. But when the light enters into a heterogeneous medium, some changes may take place. So, in that, the other thing, refraction also takes place. So, whenever the light travels from optically one medium to another medium, the light ray will deviate from its original path. The deviating of light ray from its original path is called as refraction of light and see if you consider this is the interface of separating the two mediums such as medium 1 and this is another medium medium 2 consider this as air and this as water and we can consider the air as rarer medium and water as denser medium and the line drawn perpendicular to the interface is called as normal and so whenever a light ray is traveling from optically rarer to optically denser the light ray will deviate from its original path and the angle made by the incident ray to normal is called angle of incidence and the angle made by the refracted ray to the normal is called angle of refraction and during this refraction, why the refraction of light takes place? The refraction of light takes place due to change in the medium. That means as the light travels from rarer to denser or denser to rarer, there will be change in the light. So what are the changes we can observe in the light? See mainly we can see the speed, speed or velocity speed or velocity of light changes speed or velocity of light changes and in similar way wavelength wavelength of light also changes speed and velocity changes and wavelength also will change when the light travels from optically one medium to another medium and coming to the frequency frequency of light remains same frequency remains same that means frequency will not change so what is meant by the frequency see if we are getting a light from a bulb so you consider that thousand particles are emitting out from the bulb per one second so that is known as its frequency thousand particles in one second so if the same bulb is placed in glass or in any other medium the thousand particles per second will not change that means frequency will remain constant and next if you consider vibration of particles the vibration of particles will not change that means the vibration of particles are constant or we can say like this phase of vibration see there will be a phase uh, the phase of vibration of particles see when the light travels from one place to another place we know that the light has a dual nature it has a wave nature and a particle nature and the particles will vibrate in their mean position so the vibration of particles will remain same whether the light travels to the air water or glass wherever it is going through which medium the light is traveling the vibration of particles will remain same so two quantities will change that is speed and wavelength and two quantities will remain constant that is frequency and phase of vibration of particles so this happens when the refraction takes place when the refraction takes place these things will happen and next if you consider a loss of refraction see there are loss of refraction I 
actually there are two laws of refraction and coming to the first law first law states like this the incident ray normal refracted ray and the point of incidence all lies on the same plane all are lying on the same plane that is our first law of refraction that means incident ray refracted ray normal and the point of incidence all lie on same plane or one plane and coming to the second law second law is also called as snell's law so what is snell's law states snell's law states that sin i by sin r is constant or we can say like this it is the ratio of sin of angle of incident to the sin of angle of refraction remain same for a given two media whatever the mediums we consider two different mediums for the two different mediums sin i by sin r will always remain constant so for that uh, experimental procedure is there by taking a semi circular glass lab and by taking a white chart and placing all the uh, degree angle values on the white chart and placing the semi circular glass lab on the sheet see this is a white sheet and on this white sheet with the help of a pro circular protractor we are placing all the values from 0 to 180 degree so and on the first half we will place the semi circular glass lab and while placing a semi circular glass lab this becomes a denser medium and here there is nothing that means a so this will be the rarer medium and from here onwards we will start incinerating a laser light so when uh, when we incinerate a laser light through the normal there will be no refraction the ray will go straight if you consider at angle 10 degree then the values will follow how they will follow that means first the table form will be like this serial number angle of incidence angle of refraction sin of angle of incidence and sin of angle of refraction and finally sin i by sin r is constant like this we will get so we will get the all the values such as for example first if you take angle of incidence zero angle of refraction also will be zero if you take angle of uh, incidence as 10 degree definitely the angle of refraction will be less than this the reason is we are uh, incinerating a light ray through rarer medium to denser medium rarer to denser so the light ray will bend towards the normal as the light ray bends towards the normal the angle of refraction will be less than the angle of incidence so like that we will get some values here and but we have to take sin of i that means sin i value by uh, with the help of a logarithm book in the same way sin r value and the two values will be taken ratio and here what we will observe is the whatever the readings we have taken here or here here or here the final value that means sin i by sin r will be remains same for all the five or six trials whatever we are taking that value will remain constant which is also known as snell's law and next if we consider uh, we may have seen about the refractive index so what is meant by this refractive index see simply in one word we can say that the refractive index is nothing but the optical density refractive index it is indicated with letter mu or n so the refractive index so in one word we can say it has a optical density or so to define this refractive index we can say like this it is the speed of ratio of speed of light in different mediums see the speed of light will not be same in all the mediums the speed of light will change 
with respect to the medium so refractive index will show the ratio of speed of light in different mediums and again this refractive index is divided into two that is one is absolute refractive index and second one is relative refractive index and coming to the absolute refractive index we can define absolute refractive index as it is the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in a given medium that means uh, mu can be written as c by v where c is speed of light in vacuum and v is speed of light in a given medium and here the c value is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and the c value is constant but v value varies depending upon the medium and next if you consider the relative refractive index when a light ray is traveling from optically one medium to another medium the refractive index can be given like this so the refractive index of medium 2 relative to medium 1 is given as mu 2 by mu 1 and we know oh, what is mu mu equal to c by v so mu 2 can be written as c by v2 <laughs> as c is constant and whereas for mu 1 we can write it as c by v1 so if you cancel that c and c we will get v1 by v2 so mu2 by mu1 equal to v1 by v2 so which shows that the refractive index is inversely proportional to the speed of light that means if the refractive index of a material or a body increases then the speed of light will decrease so we can say like this that denser is the medium then uh, the speed of light will reduce if the medium is rarer then the speed of light will increase the reason is both are inversely proportional to each other and <coughs> next one principle of reversibility principle of reversibility of light so principle of reversibility of light see consider a situation that light travels from a rarer medium to denser medium so here the light starts at a point A and it is traveling as it enters the denser medium it bends and it reached some point B the light is traveling from point A to point B from rarer to denser so if this is possible the light is able to travel from point B to point A also as this is rarer and this is denser the light is able to travel see here it traveled from rarer to denser it bent towards the normal as it is traveling from denser to rarer it have to bend away from the normal so here B to A so if the light is able to travel from B to A there is a possibility of light to travel from B to A also so by using this principle of reversibility of light this refractive index of medium 2 relative to medium 1 can be given as 1 by refractive index of medium 1 relative to medium 2 that means we can reverse the mediums as the light is having the ability to travel from a different medium rarer to denser as well as denser to rarer and next now if you consider that conditions there are some conditions for no refraction so the refra we know that the refraction takes place when the light travels from optically one medium to another medium even though the light traveling from optically one medium to another medium the refraction may not take place when such things will happen see consider this as a, a medium one with refractive index some mu one this is a medium two with refractive index mu two and when the light ray is traveling through the normal when the light ray is traveling through the normal then there will be no refraction the light will travel in a strike line here and in the same way uh, 
here refractive index mu1 this is a medium and this is another medium having a refractive index mu2 so if the refractive index of both the medium that means mu1 equal to mu2 then we can consider that the light ray will not bend and there will be no refraction of the light when the refractive index of two medium are same this also will happen and next one is see if you consider the ray of light traveling from optically rarer medium to optically denser medium what happens is the light ray will bend towards the normal this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction so angle of incidence will be greater than angle of refraction that means when the light ray travel from uh, rarer to denser the light ray will bend towards the normal and the angle of incidence will be greater than angle of refraction and if you consider the same situation uh, like this denser to rarer now consider a light ray traveling from denser to rarer so whenever a light ray is traveling from denser to rarer it will bend away from the normal so this is our angle of incidence and this is our angle of refraction and in this situation we can observe that angle of incidence will be less than the angle of refraction here the refraction angle will be the more here the angle of incidence will be the more so whenever a light ray is traveling from rarer to denser it bends towards the normal and angle of incidence will be greater than angle of refraction whenever a light ray is traveling from denser to rarer it bend away from the normal so angle of incidence will be less than the angle of refraction